Hey there, friends. Welcome back to another Legally Armed America video. I'm, of course, Paul Glasgow here, the one and only truth pimp dealing with a vulgar display of logic and reason on a daily basis. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about a little bit more realistic things regarding the Maduro capture. Obviously, the internet was on fire yesterday from all the reports, the different videos, the opposing videos, some saying that somehow <laughs> the people of Venezuela wanted to continue to have a tyrant rule over them and crush their entire society and economy. And of course, we saw the more realistic grassroots type stuff where people were actually happy. So just a crazy whirlwind of a day yesterday regarding all news associated with Venezuela. I want to address something a little bit more, I guess, close to me and my family and many of you out there, those of you who actually have jobs and contribute to this nation society. I'm talking about the United States we kind of get a little concerned whenever our money is being spent. And what I wanted to look at is, okay, how does the United States gain in any, any way? And I just want to know, how do they gain in any way with this type of operation? And going forward, if Venezuela is run the way we think it should be run, I'm talking about the United States again, because everyone's asking the same questions. Why would the United States even care about Venezuela? Was it something about ideology? Well, the answer to that is no. Was it politics? Eh. Or was it money? Eh. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. Today, I'm breaking this down, the actual cost of an operation like what we just saw to capture Nicolas Maduro, what that operation likely costs you and I, the American taxpayer, and how Venezuelan oil could change the math completely in this entire hemisphere. This is not going to be a video where we talk a ton about politics. This is more math. This is economics. How does this impact us? Because I do believe many of us care. What's the end game here? And not from a political standpoint. Is this going to cost me more? Do we benefit somehow? First, let's look at the operational cost of this operation to get Maduro. Let's start with the actual price tag. To run a short, overwhelming U.S. military operation like we just saw, you got Naval Task Force, aircraft, ISR, special operations. You're looking at a total estimated cost of about $300 million with a realistic range between $200 million and $450 million on the top end. That's going to include warships, submarines at sea, fighters, bombers, tankers, ISR aircraft, drones, special operation helicopters, command, fuel, logistics, staging. In many cases, we're talking about costs so high that we could be talking about costs per second. And I'll talk about that a little bit. First, let me talk a little bit about what each one of these individual units would cost the American taxpayer. So we've got fighter aircraft involved. FA-18, which is run by the Navy, F-22s, which is run by the Air Force, F-35s, usually the Air Force and uh, Marine Corps. What they do is establish air superiority. They escort helicopters and other high-value aircraft to whatever the point is, the attack point. They provide precision strikes and rapid response. They deter foreign or domestic air interference. Now the cost, F-18 Super Hornets unit cost of about $70 million to build with an operating cost of about $18,000 per flight hour. You have your F-22 Raptor with a unit cost of procurement of $150 million with an operating cost of about $85,000 per hour. You have your F-35, all variants of this one, a unit cost of about eighty to $100 million. Now the operating cost of that is about, man, let's call it between $33,000 and $30,000. $38,000 per flight hour. You want to know why they matter? Look, without air dominance, nothing else will move safely, especially the helicopters and the ISR platforms. Next up, we have our strategic bombers, the B-1B Lancer. Now, what it does is it provides long-range standoff strike, heavy payload of precision weapons, and strategic deterrence. Cost of this is about $317 million. Operational cost is about $70,000 per flight hour. Why this matters? The B-1B tells every actor in the region, escalation is going to fail. <laughs> no sense fighting back. <laughs> Next up, we have the drones, the UAVs. Armed and ISR UAVs. Most cases, we're talking about the MQ-9 Reaper class. Now, what they do is they provide persistent surveillance. Constant. They track movements vehicles, maritime traffic, precision strikes if they are authorized to do so, and maritime interdiction monitoring. The cost of these, about 30 to $35 million per unit cost. Operating cost, $3,500 to $5,000 per flight hour. Now, why do these matter? They see everything continuously. 
at a fraction of the cost of a manned aircraft. Next up, we got our rotary wing aircraft. These are usually special operations helicopters like an MH-60, MH-47 class. What they do is they insert special operations forces. They conduct assault and extraction, fly low, fast, and at night, they can see in the dark. Unit cost on these is about $40 to $50 million, with an operating cost about $15,000 to $20,000 per flight hour. Why do these matter? This is the decisive capture platform, the moment where control is physically established. Next up, we have surface combatants. These are essentially cruisers and destroyers. Now, what they do is provide air and missile defense. They launch Tomahawk cruise missiles. They act as floating command and control centers. Cost of these, let's say the Ticonderoga class is about oh, cost of $1 billion. Operating cost is $1 to $2 million per day. Now, remember, we got a lot of people on board and a lot of fuel to fuel that. So that's why those costs are so high. Your Arleigh Burke class, the unit costs about $2 billion. Operating cost of $1.5 to $2.5 million per day. Why do these matter? Well, they enforce sea control and provide instant long-range strike without entering airspace. Next up, we have our amphibious ships, the USS Iwo Jima and the USS San Antonio, USS Fort Lauderdale in this case. What they do, they carry Marines, helicopters, and command staff. In case stuff goes sideways, we got backup. They serve as staging bases offshore. They support aviation, logistics, and sustainment. Cost of these, let's say unit cost is $1.6 to $2.2 billion per ship, and the operating cost is 2 to $4 million per day. Why do these matter? Well, they allow the U.S. to project power without actually occupying any territory. Next, we got submarines, attack submarines. What it does is covert ISR and tracking, Tomahawk cruise missile launch, strategic deterrence. Again, unseen, but they know we're there. The cost of these, three to $4 billion. Operating costs, one to $2 million per day. Now, why do these matter? So submarine, it's the invisible guarantee that escalation is absolutely useless. Finally, we have support and enabling aircraft. We got tankers, EW jamming, recon aircraft. What they do is provide aerial refueling. It keeps the fighters airborne if it's more of a sustained fight. Electronic warfare, they're gonna provide radar and comms disruption, signals, intelligence, and reconnaissance. Cost of these, 150 to $250 million each. Operating cost is $20,000 to $35,000 per flight hour. Why do these matter? Well, obviously. Without these, the operation runs out of fuel, visibility, and of course, with that comes, you lose all control over the operation. A lot of money. And the cost on this, in many cases, is measured by cost per minute, as you saw. Not cost per operation or by, per hour or per day. It's measured in minutes. So using conservative estimations, we're talking about roughly $300 million in total cost for this one operation. It's about 10 minutes of direct control time is what we're dealing with. That works out to roughly $30 million per minute of control. That sounds insane if you didn't already know what each of those uh, procurement costs are and operational costs. A lot of money for this very short operation. But what does this cost you and I, the American taxpayer? There are about 160 million American taxpayers in the United States. So that was about a $300 million operation, right? Divide that evenly and it's about $1.88 per taxpayer for that operation. Less than an energy drink or a cup of coffee. At least I guess that's what, I don't buy cups of coffee. I make my own and I don't drink energy drinks. So I, I assume it's probably less than that, right? Per American. But here's where it gets interesting because a lot of people who are opposing this operation say it was only about oil. At full production capacity, Venezuela's refineries can process about 1.46 million barrels of oil per day. Now, we all know that these idiots that were running Venezuela completely ran the oil refineries into the ground. They didn't know how to maintain them. Of course, they kicked out and sometimes jailed and imprisoned the actual people who knew how to run these refineries. Remember the Sitco guys, five or six guys got imprisoned over there for a year or so. So nobody wanted to work with them. No one who knew anything about how to run a refinery would go. So from a maintenance standpoint and a production standpoint, it took a massive dive. So they weren't at full production. The numbers I'm giving you is what the United States plans to do to return these refineries to full production. Depending on the cost per barrel of oil at that time, oil sales can range anywhere from $58 million per day to $89 million per day 
regarding Venezuelan crude. So that's the range that we're going to be dealing with. That's gross sales value per day. So even at the low end, you're talking about tens of millions of dollars every single day, which leads to the obvious comparison. At $58 million per day, a $300 million operation is theoretically paid back in about five days of full oil output. Now, why does this benefit the United States? Because it does. I know some people who are opposing this are thinking, ooh, you know, the United States is going over there to take the oil. That's really not how it works. But this is how we benefit. This is what we potentially gain. Heavy crude supply perfectly matched to the U.S. refineries, shorter supply chains than what we get from the Middle East, lower pressure on fuel prices over time, investment and jobs for U.S. energy companies, reduce leverage for rivals like China and global oil markets. More supply means lower cost. The sad thing is, on a quick side note, is we could produce all we need right here in the United States if it wasn't for all these stupid green initiatives. We have enough oil here to produce for ourselves. But this new production down in Venezuela will certainly help our refineries here in the United States because instead of importing crude, which sounds so stupid since we could produce it ourselves, but instead of importing it from the Middle East, we have a quick trip right down from the Caribbean to any of our ports here in the United States in the Gulf of America. So when people are asking, why would the U.S. ever get involved in Venezuela? You have to wonder if they really mean the question that they're asking or if they're just being smart Alex about it. Because the answer is not some kind of little catchy slogan that they can put on one of their manufactured signs in downtown New York that George Soros helped pay for. It's about math. And at this point, each one of us taxpayers is in the hole about two bucks. At this point, I can handle that. At this point. That's where I said in my video yesterday, where do we go from here in Venezuela? I don't want to see us investing a bunch of our money. I'm tired of the American taxpayer paying for crap all over the globe. That doesn't affect us and we don't benefit from. If this is done right, the American taxpayer in the end, through costs, supply chains and things like that, will benefit from an increased production of crude down in Venezuela. You can agree or disagree with the policies involved, but you can't argue with the numbers that I've just laid out here. This is not potentially a bad thing for the U.S., again, if run the right way. Guys, if you liked the video, please let me know. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on our involvement with this whole Venezuelan thing? If you found this breakdown useful, like the video, subscribe to Legally Armed America here on YouTube, and share with someone who still thinks this is all just about politics. Don't forget, guys, if you're looking for a book to educate yourself and to educate the idiots out there who can't think for themselves regarding mass shootings, go to damnliars.net. Again, damnliars.net and get my brand new book, Damn Liars. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.